Auto Line After Hours is brought to you by Bridgestone Tires, your journey, our passion. And by Henkel, excellence is our passion. This is AutoLine After Hours with John McElroy, episode 284 for April 24th of 2015, tearing down the Model T of our time. Watch AutoLine After Hours live at AutoLine.tv every Thursday at 3 p.m. Eastern Time. That's 12 p.m. Pacific or 19 hours GMT. You can subscribe to this podcast for free by searching for AutoLine in iTunes, Stitcher, or YouTube. Gary Vasilash, hey, you guys had a good show last week. Thank you. We, we missed you. You were you were under the weather, and I, uh, I we was, had to uh, yeah soldier on without you. I, yeah, I was I was puking my guts out to be honest. Yeah. So I'm, I'm mean, glad you weren't here. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> right. but it was good. Yeah. And we got to tell everybody we got uh, Lindsey Brook back again from SAE International. Good Great to see you, John. Here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So and we'll get into talking about what's been going on at the SAE Congress later on in the show. But we got to let everybody know we got Sandy Monroe here from Monroe and Associates, and <laughs> he's he's back. He's back with back his back. Of popular de yeah. popular demand. Right. Oh boy, popular demand. Yikes. Well, that's good. Well, John and I, I, I wanted to, to see you again. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I mean, it's just <laughs> ran out of other people. You know, it's so. just like, what the hell? Let's get Sandy on. He's just yeah. pretending. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah. yeah, it's like, <laughs> like the feigning interest. Kid, you had to yeah. put a pork chop around his neck to get the dog to play with him or something. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm happy to be back. I really am. So yeah. we've been promoting the show all week, talking about the teardown that your company did of the BMW i3. And yeah. And we'll we'll need to get into the the details. And we, we I should hasten to add that you don't just rip cars apart so that people can look at the parts. You actually look at what kind of materials went into it, how those materials were right. processed, i.e., the manufacturing process. You've got software that you call Design Profit that helps predict what the actual cost of making all this stuff is. Yeah. So I just want to set that. Uh, uh, you know, as part of the backdrop, that you're not just getting out there with an impact wrench and taking these things apart. I mean, you're you're taking them down, damn near to the molecular level. Well, actually, in the case of the battery, we did have to go to the molecular level because we had to uh, we had to we had to come up with the chemical formulas that uh, that actually make the battery work. So, all of those little fluids and all the different components inside. And well, wait, well, just before you oh, get into oh, oh, specifics, oh, oh. Uh, okay, explain. Okay. We know what you did, but those who are watching don't know what you did and why you did it, and, and oh. that you've been doing stuff like this right along. So, so first, just, let's start with the car. You bought an i3, and, and right. you bought this some time ago when they were not easy to get. Not that they're easy now, but well, how'd you get they're one? Not, they're not easy, easy to get, but getting that one was even tougher because it was impounded. The government wouldn't let them in initially. Um, so we put a tag on one and then found a dealer that was going to get it to us. Um, um, I wanted one of the very first ones as fast as I could get it. And what we did, we got it in uh, June or July, I can't remember, but early on. And we, last year. And last year. And we dove into it. Now, um, I thought I'd buy it and then I'd coax uh, an OEM into... Uh, you know, into paying us to tear it to pieces and find out how much it costs and things like that. And um, there wasn't a heck of a lot of interest initially. The car companies are saying, this is going to be like a toy. It's, it's made out of carbon fiber. I mean, the way you do that is, and then they describe F1 uh, manufacturer with the bagging and the, and the vacuum and then sending into the autoclave and everything else. And, and I said, no, I don't think it's like that. I, I think it's different. And they weren't buying. So, I had a car, and and then we started looking at it, and uh, and every time we looked at something, we went, oh my God, look at this! Oh, look at that! Oh my! So in an, I, an in an impressed way, very you're not impressed. looking at it going, boy, what a joke! Yeah. Right. Well, I that's not a hundred percent true. <laughs> oh, because, because there's good stuff to get into. <laughs> no, that I mean, uh, I I guess everybody has different tastes. My tastes don't run along that style. I mean, I'm very, from an engineering standpoint, yeah, everything was jaw-dropping. But styling-wise, uh, not, not 
for me. I, I didn't care for the, the styling. Right. But it was comfortable. I liked uh, some of the cleanness. The, the, uh, uh, the instrument panel is extremely clean. It's only got two little modules. Everything is, everything is electronic. And it's, it's like running my, my, my tablet or my cell phone or something like that. I like that idea of did 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 you know rather than uh, it this you know it, it's it's a giant departure from the old day. In fact, that's what we say. It's like the watershed. That car is the watershed. Everything from the past is the past. Everything from here forward is what's going to happen. Well, either that or you're going to die. It's as simple as that. The guys that don't don't jump Why, on this car. Why? Just because it's move. electric and carbon fiber? No, because it's so different in every way. So, how many cars have you done in your career at Monroe? You mean like, tear Monroe down. has Monroe's torn down probably maybe two hundred something cars. Nah, figures. Basil Ash asked me questions I don't have answers to. But anyway, <laughs> I, a lot. I, you've, I, you've torn I know, down a lot. I know there's about probably about a hundred and twenty or so. We've We've uh, we've done to the nth degree. Right. So so when you say that this is a watershed, I mean this, oh, we, this we is with background. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Right. I, I this isn't something like uh, you know some professor making noise. I, I I'm telling you flat. We've seen lots and lots and lots of vehicles. And by the way, I'm not just talking about automobiles either. This is a watershed for aircraft. This is a watershed for high speed trains. This is a watershed for a whole lot of things. It's not just that car. This is, this is the Model T of our time. This is, like I say, everything on the other side, everything is that was past. in the past is the past. So uh, thumbnail, what makes this so revolutionary? Well, we, the, the, the top two or three, number one is the way they, they can build carbon fiber. Now, um, you guys know, but maybe the audience doesn't. I... I spent a lot of time in the aircraft industry, and I've also worked with F1 cars, two or three of them, two or three different companies. Um, I know a lot about <clears throat> custom cars and what you have to do in order to get a, uh, a, good, a good product out of carbon fiber. I was not, exp and I will tell you that normally a carbon fiber part from the time you decide to start it until you've got the part in hand, ready to put in place, you're looking at days, three, four, five days, okay? Because it takes a while, you lay it all down, and it's, there's a lot of toxic things that are going on, it's a, and you've got a lot of equipment, like the autoclaves and whatnot, they're not cheap. When we started digging into this and found out that the uh, cycle time is less than five minutes, like, so if they want to, they can roll a car off the line in five minutes, every five minutes, that, that was big stuff. I, I don't know how to do that. I didn't know how to do that. The body structure in five minutes. The body structure, everything. The car's cycle time is five minutes. So, um, so like a normal car line is one minute. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we usually look at a 60-second cycle time, and a car rolls off. This is five minutes. Wow. And you could roll a car off the line. So that, that to me, was big, big stuff. But it wasn't just the carbon fiber. The carbon fiber is definitely, um, it, it uses RTN, re resin transfer molding. Um, uh, they don't use really, a, it's a kind of epoxy, but it's a polypropylene and, uh, and an agent. It's, it's a very, very smart use of the materials. And, and then that, that's good all by itself. And then they figured out how they could recycle it, which was kind of smart too. And then the bits and pieces, the off-all that normally would get thrown away, they take them and stitch them together and it turns into the roof. And the roof happens to be a class A surface. I mean, and it looks like class. Out of awful. Out of awful. And it's class A. And it's class A. So it's a whole bunch of bits and pieces, scraps, that are, that are knitted or sewn together, and that, becomes, that can, becomes your roof. So that, I mean, there's a lot of stuff. I can go on and on with that stuff. By the way, for those of you who have never seen carbon fiber, this is what it looks like. And we're not going to wave this around because I start sneezing. But anyways... This is what it looks like when it's... Um, just looks like a black mat. It looks like... That's woven mat. together. Exactly. It's stitched together. So um, that's what keeps it from falling to pieces. So you can see it's stitched in two different directions. And that kind of is what, uh, what you start with um, when you're uh, Well, that's interesting. The mat. You say stitched, not woven, because hasn't carbon fiber heretofore been all woven mat? No, it's always... It's, it's always just, stitched like it's that? It's always stitched okay. like... That's what gives it that cool look.
So, Sandy, you took your costing all the way back to Moses Lake, Washington, where they no, set No, we didn't. This. We went to, we went, we went back to Torrey. So to we, Torrey, okay. Yeah, so we went right back to nothing. When we do costing, it's a lot different than everybody else. We want every step, every chemical, every process, Down every to the machine raw tool. And, and we, we benchmarked this based on its country, or not country, but its location of origin. So Moses Lake, that's, a, that's an origin. Not Washington State, but only Moses Lake. And Torre, the prefecture that has Torre in it. So I know what the, what the labor rates are going to be. I know what the utilities costs are. I know uh, what the machine costs are. That's how we do our stuff. It's very, very accurate, very, very precise. And the one thing that we found when we started doing the costing these buggers, <laughs> the BMW guys, really, they really put it to us. So, so did you know that they make stuff in Morocco? No. You know what? Neither did we. And we didn't have any cost models for Morocco. So we had to go and <laughs> develop the cost models to suit these. What do they build in Morocco? I don't know. The, guys told, the guy that uh, worked on it, um, he, he doesn't want to talk about it. But anyways, he was very frustrated. But I, I, what they, they told me that, that Morocco, there was about five or six different spots We've never heard of anybody building anything there. Hmm. And so we had to go back and, and develop cost models for those areas. But to, to back to the carbon fiber, you had told me one time that they're using different levels of carbon fiber for right. different aspects. And it seems to me that, right. that generally in the auto industry, the approach is we're going to make them all the same and that these guys were, were more clever than that. And they just said, OK, horses for courses, we're going to put different materials right. where they belong. Right, and, and they did use material selection, and they also did um, a good job on layering, and that's why I brought this thing. On this one, you can see that there's different layers. And this is what, interior trim panel? Or no, this no, is no, part this, of the is, structure? this is part of the structure. And so you can see, like, this is a, this is a, a fastener that's been um, 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 uh, formed around the carbon fiber. Most of them are called onsets. This is an inset, but most of the things are onsets. They're adhesively glued to the carbon fiber, and we have already done our little testing. You'll break the carbon fiber before you'll get rid of the onset. That glue, that adhesive doesn't break. And if you look at this, you can see, oh, here's a layer, and that's why I brought this one, because we tore it apart, completely apart. Um, and uh, so some of this stuff, um, some of this stuff did delaminate because we were using sledgehammers, literally, and uh, you were there when we were trying to cut this thing to pieces. I mean, it, it really is a strong vehicle, way stronger than you'd ever believe. So you can see, here's a one layer, and it, it appears to be going this way. And then if you look at it, you can see there's another layer underneath, and it's going that way. And then you can see that this layer, the one that's sitting on top, it's going in another direction. So, so what you got is one's like that, one's like this, one's like that. And that way, in crash, yeah. you've got... They're oriented. They're, strong, they're oriented right. correctly. Yeah. Right. So, so they, they, they did a very, very good job at, uh, at figuring out how to, uh, how to design the, the car for ultimate crashworthiness and also ultra lightweight. How did you find things like bill of material in this car? Uh, no, we make the bill of material as we're tearing it apart. Compared to a, it's like a typical modern sedan, is it dramatically reduced in terms of fastener count and so forth? Well, there's hardly any fasteners. Everything's glued on, so it's, it's, it's all very difficult. Structural yeah. adhesive. Right. Plus, Which uh, you love, right? You hate fasteners. Actually, yeah. you know what? A long time ago, I hated structural adhesives, too. But you know what? Not now. <laughs> um, I will tell you, too, that there is Pickle. the onsets are glued on, <laughs> but there's also little things that they, that they, dis they, they put these little nubs and the nubs are for, um, that's how you load the wire into the car, the wiring harness. Mm. It's, there's little nubs that come when you send the, RT, when you send the, um, uh, uh, the adhesive, well, not the adhesive, but the, uh, but the polypropylene and the, uh, and the, and the uh, curing agent. When you send it in, they put voids in the mold mm. so that you get these little nubs. And now the resin takes a form, and now uh. for free, I got all these little tracers so I can... Put all of the wires and pipes and anything else that's in there. They they all weave right in. Clever. They get it for free. I mean, a whole bunch of stuff that we would have fasteners for are gone because right. of this. Wow. 
How do you, in a heavy electrified vehicle, look into something like an ECU, which is increasingly a big part of cost of, you know, electrified products, but you know, you've got to figure out algorithms and, and all the work that goes into that box. How do you put a cost and time and so forth into that? Funny you should ask. Yeah. <laughs> he just has to have a bag, a full, bag of full of ECU pieces. I, I did not. You know what? I picked up the ECU. Here, Lindsay, thought, have one. Now figure nobody, it out. <laughs> nobody's going to care about the ECU. I, I'm going to bring what everybody wants to talk about, which is infotainment. Oh, and I broke it. Now I'm going to get into trouble with my my guy. It'll never play the same again. It won't. Uh, so anyway, these are the bits and pieces for the infotainment center, which is... Um, oh, I can have one too. Um, I won't care. Uh, we won't do that. But anyway, if you have a look at this stuff, okay, so now everybody's got a handful of rubbish. So, because that's what it is now. But if you have a look at it, it's got, it's populated with a, a bunch of little things, right? Mm -hmm. So, Every one of those little things has a cost, and every one of those little things tells us what's going on. Right. Okay? Resistors are pretty easy, but some of these other boxes here, we had to decap, uh, take them apart, or x-ray them in order to make that happen. Now, we can do that, but uh, we chose to go with, uh, one, with our partner, um, which is uh, Tech Insight. Tech Insight and Tech Teardown, their Teardown Inc. is, uh, is uh, the best guys we know anyway for, uh, uh, for helping us out with the costing and, and basically the descriptions associated with each one of these different, um, wow. each, each one of these different circuit boards. So um, I, I mentioned in the room that I, I probably pumped about two million bucks into this thing. That's cost. There's no... Uh, into the teardown. Into Two the million teardown. bucks right. just to tear this car down. Yeah. But yeah. not and just the teardown, are... but also to do all the figuring yeah. now. Well, the, 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 the teardown... Thing, estimating. Teardown probably costs about... If I was going to tear a car down for free or, or for just for us and whatnot, and I wasn't going to be charging a customer and, and I wasn't going to add SG&A or profit or anything else, it costs about $28,000, $29,000 tops. Okay, tear it down, take pictures or whatever. That's, that's about what... It doesn't cost very much. But if you want to go into the detail of how much does this thing cost, the guys that did the electronics, Tech, Ter uh, uh, Tech Insight, they, um, they told me that this would have cost about $200,000 to do the circuit boards, and I got like $2 million bucks into the, um, um, into the car itself. So this is not a cheap proposition because everything is documented, everything. John, so this, this is your favorite company, Harman. Harman, no kidding. Okay. Very interesting. And the car was how much? Fifty grand for this car? It was fifty-four thousand yen. Fifty-four, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it was fifty-four. So we bought the RX version, um, and um, which the is RX the hybrid version, right? Is the well, it's not a hybrid range it's, extender? It's, it's a range extender. What it is is it's got a little motorcycle engine in it. Uh, not that's that's a sad uh, commentary. We don't need to walk on. I mean that that thing was not very. Uh, they should have picked something else. Right. But anyways, they have the two-cylinder um, motorcycle engine, but the generator. Hoo, hoo, hoo. And as luck would have it, I just happen to have one here. <laughs> I just happen to have one here. Exactly. Laminations. Exactly. Laminations. So laminations tell you a lot about what's going on inside of everything, and this is but the I lamination yeah. that's inside the. Uh, whoops. Where do I point this? Okay. Anyway, this is the lamination that's inside the. Um, inside the um, um, generator. Is that okay. fine blanked? It is fine blanked, but what's more important is look at that contour, look at that shape. Like, here's where your magnets go, right? They, oops, they go in these long skinny things because the orientation for magnets when you're trying to generate power is better if they're vertical. But what about these holes? And what's this funny look? These guys actually created new science. This this gives me a, a this gives me a magnetic flux. It's a little different than everything else. We were very impressed. And if we look at the at the motor, that's made by a supplier. This this is made by BMW. BMW has decided that the motor is uh, is profound knowledge. They're keeping that in house. Core technology. And it is. And so what you're looking at here again is here's the where the motor or sorry the uh, the. the uh, the magnets go, and again, you're looking at a lot, a lot of iron that's been taken away that, uh, that we just give weight. And we're gonna take a quick break, and we're gonna come back and have more of this. Stay tuned.
Okay, so you were, when we were last talking, you were well, showing us what BMW was not letting outside. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so so anyway, this this is uh, the, uh, the stuff from the motor, but this is even cooler. Now, we've taken apart every motor and every battery of every system that's come into the U.S., okay? Uh, so if it's hybrid or pure electric. Okay, every battery of every motor of every what? Every car. Okay, so any hybrid or any electric vehicle that came in, we've taken it apart and we've looked inside. So we've taken apart and analyzed and costed every motor that, uh, that every drive motor. So every, every Prius, every Spark, every, every whatever. whatever. Spark, no, we haven't done Leaf, this. Tesla? Uh, uh, oh, wait a minute, not this. Spark uh, is Chevy. Spark, yeah, the Spark is Chevy. We, what's the other one? The Bolt. Bolt. The Bolt and the uh, Bolt. We have not taken a Bolt apart. Yeah, there is no The Spark, yeah. I'm not sure about. But, uh, but yes, we did, the, uh, we did the Volt. We've done the um, Tesla Model C Max. S. We, if, you, if you can think of it, probably we've done it. So normally what you see is this is made kind of like in a big circle. Okay, This is where your windings go. Uh, but that's not, what, that's not what BMW did. They made little teeny sections, okay, and they made them like a little puzzle. See, it's got this little uh, little hole here, and a little nub on the other side. Why and, wouldn't you just made it. stamp it out? And that's exactly what it came out in a long strip, okay. But if they would have tried to curl it around, you know, uh, to where it needs to be, like a big circle, well, it would have it would have bent and they would have had problems. So what they did was they made it in little sectors. Okay, like, a, we, like putting together a little train, right? So a stamp it flat, no offall. It's very little scrap. But if it was made round, lots of offall. Lots of scrap, yeah. right? So then they take it and put it together like this. So you see it? It's just like a little train set. Train tracks. Wow. Yeah. There you go. Wow. So this is kind of like, uh, this is kind of the, uh, one of the, I mean, everything. It, so so why, why, why were they so obsessed by taking care of all of the bits and pieces. I mean, you mentioned earlier about how they take the, the scrap pieces of carbon fiber that were part of making the, yeah. the chassis and, and laying them together and then remolding them to make the roof, which is class A surface. You're pointing out that they're making these stampings that are otherwise would just, you know, there'd be a lot of sheet metal, they'd melt it and whatever. I mean, what, what do you think is behind this, this careful attention? I, I truly believe that if you take a bunch of engineers and you don't uh, give them restrictions, they'll give you wonderful products. But um, if you make a restriction that says something like, um, hey, I want to have the minimum amount of, uh, of tooling costs, and I want to have the maximum amount of, um, of uh, product that... Uh, that uh, that, that, that's going to go out the door without scrap or whatever. Now you've challenged the engineer way more than normal. And that's when you start getting this. That's when you start getting this kind of stuff. I don't know why anybody hasn't done this before. I mean, but you know what? Um, this is morally right. Okay, we don't usually, as an engineer, we don't usually get the opportunity to do what's morally right. Green is an interesting concept, but it costs a lot of money, we think. It costs a lot of money to go green, but these guys have proved that that's not true. You can make money, and here's a good example. So we should point out you're an engineer just for those. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For those who don't know, I, I am an engineer. <laughs> I am the engineer. <laughs> so this really is like Model T. I mean, Ford's original right. kind of brief for his team was a lot of the same kind of stuff. I, if I didn't know better, I'd say that they resurrected him and, uh, and put him in charge. Yeah. Because I'll tell you flat, there's so many things like this that just, we just, we're dumbfounded. I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't happen that often. There's very little that comes across in a car that we get excited about. Very, very little. Because we work on some really, literally, spacey things. And we don't just do automotive, we do aircraft, we do a lot of different things. And, and when we started seeing this, to get me excited doesn't happen that often. I want to see magic. And although this isn't magic, from a money-making standpoint, it is magic. It's, so you think they're it, making money on this car? I'm positive they're making. They, um, Even at the very low volume that they're at. Mm. They're at 12000 a year. Mm -hmm. okay, okay, but isn't this engineered to be a low-volume car and the whole process is... 
I but even so, that. To, to have a low volume car and you know you you paid over fifty grand, you know most of them are going out the door at around forty three thousand. At, so to make twelve thousand cars a year at forty three thousand dollars, I mean, do the multiplication. That, that, that's not a lot of money to play around with and be able to make a profit. Yeah. So how do they do that? And now you might ask that. That's okay. where the magic comes in. <laughs> you guys are reporters. Come on. I'm, I'm the engineer. You're the reporter. So how did they do it? All right. So what's the differential between uh, stamping a uh, body in white, uh, conventional uh, uh, monocoque or, or, or unibody, unibody, whatever. What's, uh, what's the cost of... Uh, the tooling cost the tooling is very cost. high. What, what, what would that be? Any idea? I, I think it's $12 million a die set per panel. Okay, yeah, well, what's the whole number? So oh, that, well, how many so panels? I mean, just, just the Class A, you got two front fenders, a, a hood, a roof, uh, four doors, a deck lid, and rear fender. I don't know. You're, you're looking at, what, 15 different die sets at least. It's just about, for the exterior. Yeah, well, let's, we'll cut to the chase. It's about million. $450 million, okay? okay? That's what it costs. So how much to do the, the stuff for, uh, for um, I3? the I3? Yeah. As luck would have it, we've already calculated it out. <laughs> we haven't got the whole number yet. We're, at, um, we're almost finished, and we're at $112 million. So this is a reinvention of the automobile. You point. got it. So it's a quarter of the... And you know the what? Tool. It's on a frame. <gasps> <gasps> <laughs> it is. It's body on frame. It's body on frame. Carbon fiber body on aluminum frame. Right. Right. So, the um, the carbon fiber that was uh, that's a tough one for most of the tin bangers to take. I, I used to work in that kind of field as well, in body and white. It's tough for me to swallow hard and say, you mean we're going to get rid of sheet metal? But in actuality, um, it's pretty hard not to when you see the numbers. Mm. Yes, carbon fiber from a material standpoint, standpoint is, is more expensive. But, oh, yeah, the offall that I throw in the garbage, I just took it and sewed it in to make a roof. I don't have much, in a way, offall. Right. Wow, that's kind of interesting. And then um, I, I don't have to really crash the car. I have to crash the frame. The frame basically is everything, right? So if BMW decides, and I hope they do, to swap out the look of the car and put another bucket on top of it. Voila. Which was there. the brilliance right. of body on frame for years for the U.S. industry. Right. And the reason we went, the people don't, what happens is people don't remember why we did things. We went to, I remember going to Unibody and thinking, why did anybody think we should go do body on frame? Why were they, what were they thinking? We went to Unibody so we could reduce the weight, but more importantly, I, I could reduce the cost. I got rid of cost because we were making four, five, six hundred thousand units a year. We had to crank these things out like there was no tomorrow as fast as we possibly could. Unibody's perfect for that. Hmm. But what happens when you're only looking at sixty thousand a year? Oh, fifty, sixty thousand, that's not a good idea. Four hundred and fifty million or it will probably wind up at about 120 million, something like that. Wow. So, so is, like is, is there a sweet spot for, for the volume, though, for carbon yes. fiber? And the that sweet spot is probably going to be under 100,000, at least right now. Okay, with the techniques that I know about right now, it's probably going to be at 100, under 100,000. For the kind of carbon fiber um, operation we're looking at here, this is probably good from about 1,000 to about 30,000. That's, that's, I think, uh, the, the way that BMW is doing it. Now. BMW is doing it with this way. But then this is the i3, and ta-da, you guys know about the i5? Yeah. So the i5 doesn't use this process. It's carbon fiber, but it doesn't use this process. And the reason for that is because it's not an electric vehicle. Well, it's not electric in the way we were thinking. The B and you probably already know about this, too, with the Toyota thing. Which or Toyota I thing? I don't know. Well, Toyota and BMW made a swap. Toyota is giving... BMW, um, the fuel cell. So now they have a fuel cell car, and that's what the i5 is. It's a fuel cell vehicle. It's not a... It's not a battery electric. not a battery. And the i5 is actually a... Uh, it's actually a unibody. And that moves you from um, where you are now, which was like uh, 30,000 
to put you into the hundred thousand dollar, or sorry, the hundred thousand. Wait a minute! Range. You just convinced us body on frames the best. Oh, you're saying that no, no. unibody is the way. What you? This is the thing. Everybody's looking for the one magic bullet. There isn't a magic bullet. From a thousand to thirty thousand, put it on a frame. Okay, that's thirty to maybe even fifty thousand. Okay, put it on a frame. After that, you have to start looking at a whole bunch of rationale, and some of that rationale has to do with where's the sweet spot. How much money are we spending? Do we spend the money? What kills programs? Every program that I've been ever on Goes that died. Cost. <laughs> it, no, it wasn't a cost. It's the investment cost. And when I'm looking at 450 million versus even say 200 million, right. I don't drink. care if my piece cost is higher mm -hmm. because I got to amortize all that other junk and I got to buy that right now. That's my boom, here's my investment. That investment is a killer for most car companies. Now we're looking at something where you're looking at 25, 35%, or that's what, 70, 75, 65% of, uh, of the normal cost goes away? Oh, make mine a double. I mean, that's, it well, doesn't, doesn't take long to figure out which, what you want to do. Will there be carryover between I3 and I5 to try to leverage anything here, all this invention that's on... Most of the, I know a little bit about what's going on on the i5. I know that um, it looks different than this, and I know that it's a unibody and not on frame. I know that it's a fuel cell. I know that they're going to probably try and leverage some of the, uh, I know the styling is supposed to look the same, which I don't understand, but then I, you know, I. But then you tear them apart, so what the difference yeah, exactly. does it make? Yeah. I just rip them to shreds. That's right. I don't really care about too much about the uh, the look of the vehicle. I do, but I... I no, I, I agree I, with you. I, I, it's not a handsome car. Yeah. No. It, 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 it's different, and th this was still when the theory was, although the theory seems to be changing, that you had to make a car that's electric look very, very different, right. because that's what those buyers wanted to show the world, that they were driving something that's electric. Right. Right. That's why I find it so interesting, the Chevy Bolt, with a B as in boy, is going more mainstream in the style. Oh, even the new Volt is pretty refined yeah. in that regard yeah. as well. Yeah. Yeah. So Sandy, well, what is this giant thing you brought here? I, I, that's a big cast. You, you got this big thing, and I can't let you leave yeah, without yeah, yeah. talking about this right. giant so thing. It's made, this thing has, uh, is a body on frame, right? So this is the rear suspension. Rear suspension mounting. Or the, yeah, sorry, the, the mounting for the rear suspension. And this suspension. attaches to the frame. And this attaches to the frame, and the frame's made out of aluminum. And the, um, and and the this frame must be is aluminum, too. And this is also aluminum, but this is a die casting. And um, if you're um, uh, like me, and you're an engineer, and you uh, say something like, uh, uh, oh, I'm going to take a die casting, and I'm going to turn it into the mount for the suspension, people will laugh at you. Because, um, you know... That's not done. It's worse than walking in with your fly open or something like that. It's, uh, that's dumb. You don't, you can't do that. Why? Because it won't work. It'll crash. It'll, it'll fall apart. But obviously, these guys, they didn't get told that. And then I say, oh, I'm going to take this die casting, and now I'm going to weld it to a couple of extruded aluminum beams. Then, again, people will start laughing at you because you can't do that either. And yet, this... Okay, now, if, I, if this was made out of steel and I could manipulate it, I would be Superman. Yeah. This weighs about, um, I think it's uh, 17 clicks. Hang on a second. Oh, it's 11. I just lied. Not as strong as I thought. <laughs> so there you go. So this is about 12, uh, this is uh, about 25 pounds. Is BMW casting that in-house? Yeah, I think so, yes. Yeah. Uh, it says BMW right there, so I guess yes. Hmm. So if we looked at this from the nose without ripping my pants, um, you can see where it was welded. You can see the white marks here. Okay, so this thing is welded to those aluminum longitudinals that are in the, uh, in the frame, and this is supporting the suspension. So what we're looking at here is impossible, and yet here it is. I mean, it, it's, it's, it's changed. It's a watershed. I've never seen anybody do this. If I propose this, to an aircraft company, I'd be immediately fired because they know that you can't do this, and yet here it is. It's all done. And you'll also notice um, that there's pockets here where it didn't get painted. They don't care. They don't care because it's aluminum. It doesn't, it's not going to yeah. corrode or anything. So why paint any of it? Just for looks. 
So when you look at it, it, it looks kind of black, and that's, that's it. But where it doesn't need to be painted, they didn't bother. Hmm. Well, Sandy, so, you know, you said earlier that they weren't told they couldn't do this. Now, there are lots of engineers at lots of car companies who could conceivably do this. Right. Right? I mean, so what do you think it is about the culture of BMW that allowed them to create something like that, something which you say is generally thought to be impossible. Okay, so BMW is not our customer. Um, and I really don't know an awful lot about what happens at the FITS, the engineering building where all this stuff is done. I know what it used to be like when we, we did work with BMW a long time ago when they still owned, um, uh, well, Rover. they owned still Mini, but when they owned uh, uh, Rover and those kind of badges. Um, and when they owned that, then uh, the BMW guys looked down on the uh, on the uh, every engineer except for the for the German engineers. I know that when I went through there and I talked to their people about the BMW products versus the Rover products and whatnot, they were very very proud, and they were also um, they hadn't been uh, diminished. Uh, an engineer in Germany is kind of like a big shot. An engineer over here, I mean, do you drive a train? Do you sweep the floor? Do you pick up garbage? I mean, you don't, you don't know what the engineer means over here. But over there, it's kind of a, it's kind of a big deal. And I think it's just that they're, they're allowed to do things and not look down upon. Look at that overhead. They don't, they, don't, they don't treat them quite like that. And I think that on this project, they were given a free hand. I know they spent $2.8 billion on R&D for this. And that, that's the total bill. So they developed adhesives, which um, I think uh, are made under license by a bunch of different chemical companies. They developed that motor. They developed... Um, uh, in partnership own, with the carbon fiber. The car yeah, the carbon fiber all by itself. Right. I mean, they own their own build. And they've got another one coming. They're building, a, they're twinning that plant because they're, they're going to need more. In and Moses actually, Lake, they're twinning it. Yes, yeah. and uh, you probably saw the uh, the seven series, the new seven series. Did you see the that one's all carbon fiber too? Mm -hmm. Haven't so, seen that, no. Right. Well, I'll send you the link. We have to stay ahead, you know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Anyways, no, uh, I I'm I'm very impressed. These guys are all in, and they don't do things that are stupid. Um, Mrs. Quant, I remember her very well. Um, when I was working with them at, on the Rover projects, she wants to see a return on her investment. And for those of you who don't know, Mrs. Quant owns BMW, for the most part. That's the Quant family. And, and separately, she personally is an investor in, what's it called, SQL? What's the... Yes, the, the, the SGL. 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 SGL carbon fiber, right. So right. not only is BMW an owner in it, the Quant fam Mrs. Quant herself is an right. investor in that. And, yeah. and again, you get back to ownership, I mean, um, who owns Ford? The Ford family? Not really. Is, is there a Mr. GM? Probably not. No. So the what you're looking at the there... The Ford family is still very influential there. They are very, very influential, but I don't think they have the same influence that Mrs. Quant would have. Right. Okay? Or, uh, or somebody like, uh, what's his name there? Um, Jack and the Porsche families at Volkswagen. The Porsche family. Or the union with Volkswagen. Tesla, uh, I've forgotten his name. Elon Musk. Uh, you, Musk. Yeah. Okay, but, you know, so she wants to make money, but arguably the way lots of people think you make money is by making a product that is... Cheap. Yes. Yeah. I thought I'd let you use, use, use the word. Yes, I... So these guys are creating something that is clearly not cheap, right? But it has value. Okay, and and that's what that's what's always missing. When people come up and and tell me, well, we've got to we got to reduce costs, we got to do this and whatnot. And I said, well, we can reduce costs, we can improve quality, and we can reduce weight. Oh, it's impossible. No, it's not. These guys just did it. I'm sure you guys can do it too. And I mean, if they can do it, you can't do it. Like on this thing here, we're selling these reports, right? Who's buying them? The government. Our federal government will probably be buying them. And why is that? Hey, if they can do it, you can do it. Mm -hmm. Right? <laughs> then but we'll... none of the car companies here in the Detroit area are interested in buying your report. Not a one. But, but the Chinese are, right? Um, okay, so I had Chinese guests yesterday, this morning, Monday. And then I, when, I was at the, uh, when I was at the show, because um, uh, I gave a speech then, um, there was a whole bunch of them there. And I got all next week from the SAE show. Mm -hmm. so.
that. So yeah, that, that's, and I think I knew you were going with that question anyway, Gary. Hey, we're gonna take another quick break. We got even more to talk about with Sandy Monroe and I Free Paradise. <laughs> a little chemistry goes a long way, especially when it comes to vehicle development. From enabling the use of alternate materials to withstanding extreme vehicle environments, Henkel's adhesive, sealants, and surface technologies provide solutions for every vehicle segment. Come see for yourself. Our Detroit area headquarters offers 12 research and development and testing laboratories with the ability to do full range testing and validation on actual vehicle parts. Sign up to tour our labs at henkelna.com forward slash tour. So you gave a big presentation about your teardown at uh, the SAE right. uh, World Congress taking place in Detroit this week. and. Uh, uh, I'll bet you had a lot of people interested, even if the car companies in town are not buying your report. Well, um, actually, I was very, first off, I want to, um, um, uh, the guy that, uh, the guy that got this thing going, Mark. Uh, LeDuc. Le, Mark LeDuc. At SAE? Mm -hmm. At SAE. Um, he, uh, actually, um, I can't remember who got me going on that. Was that? I, I think Mark and I were both talking to you at the same time. Uh, well, anyways, Mark, Mark, uh, had the idea, or I think it, somebody had the idea over there. But anyway, Mark uh, uh, talked to us last year mm -hmm. uh, about this. And uh, I think, personally, I think this is the, the wave of the future. What this, is This being the, what? The, 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 uh, oh, sorry, the tech hub. So what, what they've done, what the SEA did was, was they, and I know we're off track, but they, they took this one area and, uh, and they put this little... Uh, at the conference. At the conference, right in the center of the conference. So you've got... You've got um, suppliers with their booths here and suppliers with their booths there and suppliers with their booths in front and the food in back of you. So they made this great big giant, um, I don't know, three-quarter circle. And there's a little podium and stage and some comfortable chairs and whatnot if you're close to the front and then stools. And then you can stand in the back if you don't, you know, I don't want to be up on the front. I thought it was brilliant. That, that part was also good. So anyways, they created this, and then they created this little plexiglass thing around the outside edge so, you know, the noise didn't bother the, the people inside. And my guess was that would seat maybe 100 people or so, something like that, maybe a little more, maybe a little less. I'm not. Anyway, so I couldn't believe, I couldn't believe the, uh, the amount of people that showed up. If, if the first off, uh, the speech we gave was, you know, it's only 20 minutes, so it's, it's kind of fast, and I like that idea. And then on top of it, you had, um, um, we had, we had the place filled up, standing room only. Then they were standing around the outside of the plexiglass, and then they were standing at the side. And who were they? Well, mostly, I will tell you for sure, they were Chinese. The Chinese are here, they see everybody there, and they want to be here. Guess what? You're not going to get to there if you're trying to catch up to here, right? So they want they want to go leapfrog. They want to leapfrog exactly. So, 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 so you know, you said that none of the Detroit car makers are interested in your report. No, or at least openly interested in your report. What about suppliers? Suppliers are plenty. Yeah, I um, <coughs> we're going to probably the the report's broken up in a bunch of different areas. So well, what, what, sorry. What about Japanese automakers, European automakers? Is Japanese. It, we're, we're picking on the Americans here, yeah. but what about the others? Okay, so. Um, Two of the biggest Japanese guys have contacted us, and one Korean. <laughs> well, I guess I wonder who that could be. Okay. <laughs> so, Not Sung Young. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So anyways, uh, um, so uh, yes, th we've had that. But if you can think of a Chinese car company, we, they probably sent us a note. They want to know about it. They've hit the website or something like that. And that's something else I don't know. Uh, if people want... If they want to know a lot more about this, the webs our website has a whole bunch of stuff. So that's uh, basically um, leandesign.com. So if you go there, there's videos and there's um, there's articles and whatnot um, that uh, that can help anybody that wants to know about it. They don't have to buy reports. You said it fast, so I'm going to say it slower. Leandesign.com. Right. Okay. Yeah. Just to help you out there, brother. Oh, thank you, thank you. <laughs> so, so, okay. so um, I don't care what he says. Yeah, yeah. You're okay. So, so, so why, why? I mean, what's what's the purpose of the report? So, I mean, why would somebody want this report? Couldn't they, couldn't they make the argument as well? I got all these smart engineers. They can they can do. It. They they don't need that. They could, but remember, it cost me two million bucks. Yeah. 
So it's a bargain. So um, we're kind of hoping that, uh, that the cheap will come out. Somebody will do the math and say, wait a minute, it costs him two million bucks. Oh, and then the, the guys that, uh, that, that did the, um, uh, the circuit boards and whatnot, they, they pumped uh, 200,000 in. Hmm, 2.2 million versus 500,000, because that's what it costs. Maybe we should get that. Mm -hmm. That's probably what's going to happen. The report's five hundred thousand. Yeah, if you the buy full the full report, full report. Everything. But, I mean, but, but you can buy but different pieces. You can, pieces buy, you can buy ten. There's ten little pieces or five big chunks. Yeah. So. Okay. so, but functionally, what 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 would someone get out of this? Well, you would get every process, every every functional process to go all the way from raw material to uh, the finished good per per part. In other words, it would be per A part, to Z. Per yes. Okay. Yeah. So. At the end of the day, you'll know how to make that circuit board. Um, you'll need, you'll know how to, how to make this, and then the the electric motor that it goes into. Okay, it, at the end of the day, it's everything's been stripped bare. Right. It's it's a it's it's the technical process. It's grandma's recipe for making cookies <laughs> without anything missing, because grandma used to. Take uh, uh, and uh, uh, there's another ingredient, but I'm not telling you. <laughs> everything right. here is everything is done. Mm -hmm. So every and then in most cases, uh, we also tell you if there's a supplier, who the supplier is, um, and our numbers are accurate. They're very accurate. Um, we've got we have uh, very good press from our friends at the EPA and NHTSA. Uh, most of the uh, most of the big. Uh, consulting houses use us for costing mm -hmm. and whatnot. It, we're very, in fact, I was telling John, we did a great big giant um, uh, thing for one customer. Uh, we thought it was their competitor or whatever. It happened to be theirs. And when they, uh, when we gave them the, our costing, we were within two cents. Mm. That's, that's pretty accurate. And this was, uh, this was in a, as John said, well, <laughs> was the price of the thing three cents and you were within two cents? No, it, uh, it's uh, several hundred bucks for this thing. So, and BMW found you guys were right on the money with this thing, too. That was another surprise, too. At the, uh, in January at the auto show, um, a couple of guys came up, took a picture, and went back. Must have sent it to Germany and came back, and they, were, they wanted to know who gave us the prices and things like that. So it's very accurate. They thought you got internal information. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. and uh, we didn't. So. Wow. So... so how do you rank BMW compared to the other global automakers in terms of their technical capability as represented by this? Well, prior to this, I would have said they're in the pack. But now I'd say that um, they're so far advanced it isn't even funny. The only thing that I know of that, uh, that okay, so here's the thing. They have the best battery. Sam, we used to say LG's batteries were the best. Now we're looking at this Samsung battery, and we can't believe our eyes. Per, it, per cell, you mean? Per cell, uh, the whole strategy. So the cell uh, stuff, that's these things here. <laughs> and again, to have one in a bag. <laughs> hey, we, we got bags of stuff here. But anyway, um, these are the different, uh, different packs. So uh, this is the cathode, and this is probably the outer, uh, this is the outer windings. And it's wound. It's... It's not cut up like the uh, LG. So sure. instead of chop, move, clamp, chop, move, clamp, this one just goes vroom, and you're done. What a great idea. How did they do that? I mean, so we cut it all the way down to nothing. And then the chemicals that go inside, all of the stuff that you need in order to make the, uh, the um, Samsung battery, which we think is now the, the, the world's best, uh, it's, all, it's all in the report. With the cost. Hey, and we just got a question from Mitch Weaver who says, how much does Sandy think the batteries are costing these days? <laughs> yeah, if I did that, my guys would kill me. I, uh, costing is what we're selling. So <laughs> 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 kind of like... Uh, yeah, buy the report. What, what I, <laughs> buy the report, Mitch. Yeah, it's yeah. only 500000 bucks. No, 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 the battery report's less than that. Uh, if you want the battery report. But, yeah. uh, but but anyway, the uh, we used uh, to say that's the fifty thousand dollar question. It's the five hundred thousand dollar question. <laughs> but only if you want the whole thing, Mitch. You can buy just the battery if you want to. But um, uh, I'm going to try and steer clear of answering um, uh, questions that will cause my associate because we're sharing in the pain here. So yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. 
So anyway. you, you got to make a return on your investment. I do, yeah. And, yeah. Uh, and my guys, like I said, it's sharing the pain. So whatever I get, they're getting some of it as well. So but we'll put I it this way. Husband. Do you see, Sandy, that BMW has really brought the cost of a battery of, of this energy capacity and so forth down from the last hybrids or electric vehicles you've torn apart? You know what they did do was they, I don't, I, 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 I'm trying to think. I'm trying to compare it to our prior to this battery, the Samsung battery in the uh, um, in the i3. My favorite was the um, the one in the Ford C Max, and that was made by LG. And um, it's hard, it's hard to compare because that was a hybrid, and this is pure electric. But at the end of the day, I think what's really happening is it probably cost me about the same amount. Um, Probably cost me about the same amount, but I got more power. Mm. I got a lot more power density. Mm. What do you think they're using? I mean, I've driven this car, and one of the real disappointments is, is once you're on the combustion engine with that 650cc uh -oh. engine, this car is like riding a lawn tractor. I drove one up to Lansing, and it was just once it's on that engine, it's it's a rough, tough thing. Yeah, I. Uh, but I, they save money with this scooter engine that's already in, in production. 650 is no scooter. <laughs> well, it's, and, a, it's uh, a big scooter. And, I mean, they've got 650 scooters now, but... Yeah. I, I personally think that that was the uh, stinker in the design. Yeah. I, I really hate that thing. Yeah. I, I think that uh, there's a lot of ways that you can generate power, and that's maybe the worst. Right. Uh, when that thing turned on, I nearly peed my pants. That yeah. thing is so loud, it isn't even funny. Um, but, uh, but the idea is to... It's a city car. Driving it to Lansing, I think, is probably not something I would recommend. Right. If I was in New York, perfect. I, mm -hmm. I'd scoot around. It'd be fine. Or L.A. or something but like that. But if it was your only car, you'd have to really sub-optimize that, that kind of Call drive. Call Uber. Well, yeah, is, yeah, right. Exactly. Right, right. Well, this, right. is a, this is a city car. It's yeah. not a... You're not, this is not a Gran Turismo kind of thing. It's, it's a city car. Okay, we got some questions coming in here. In fact, we got a phoner right now. Ben, why don't we bring in the first phone call? Hi, this is Noah from La Honda, California. I had a few questions for Mr. Monroe. Uh, one is, on the BMW i3, do you know what the purpose of those little pieces of honeycomb plastic on the trailing edge of the skirt area of the chassis are? I can't figure it out, and I was really hoping to know. Uh, another is, do you know why Ford keeps uh, switching back and forth between they're sort of plasma-coated aluminum cylinders versus steel liners. Um, also, do you know, or do you know, what do you think are the limitations of Lotus's chassis? And finally, what are the smallest or most interesting companies you've worked with? Thanks. So you got four questions in one there. Four okay, so let's start. The first one he had was that about that honeycomb structure. Yeah, the honeycomb structure I think you're referring to is part of the crush can for the for the rear interface. I think I I can only think of that as as any uh, as as the only honeycomb I can think of. And there's there's another honeycomb apart. structure right behind the front wheels. Yes, there is, and there's and there's a whole bunch of that stuff. But that's stuck plastic. In between. Right. That the one in the front is plastic. The one in the in the center of the vehicle for T-boning is. Uh, um, is for, um, I think that's, I can't remember because I didn't do that part, but uh, I think, and it's sandwiched inside the carbon fiber. I think that one is for, um, I think that's made out of aluminum. Um, and I think the crush cans in the back have honeycomb, but I... But it's all don't crash know. structure it's stuff. All for, it's all yeah. for crash, yeah. Okay, second one that he had there, do you know anything about Ford switching back and forth between plasma-coated aluminum cylinder or steel liners? Yeah, well... Lots of people have tried plasma coating. Um, I'm an engine engineer, and I really, mm, I, I kind of like uh, steel, so uh, I'm partial. And, and I can add something to that, too. Yeah, it's good. my knowledge that that process is only used in the, uh, the, the Shelby GT uh, right. high-performance yeah. V8 and the new uh, flat-plane crank GT350 right. engine. They're the only engines that Ford is. So they really haven't switched back and forth. They're yeah, just the only the, applications. Those are all low-volume right. applications. Low-volume applications, right. right. And Mercedes uh, is starting to use it a lot, that process. Who is? Oh, yeah? Mercedes. Mercedes, yes, has been using it. Actually, Porsche used it for a while. A lot of people have tried it out and then said, you know what, it's just... Some, like I said, I like the idea of this carbon fiber, but it's not every... Perf it's not perfect forever. There's no such thing as a silver bullet, so 
if I'm looking at a high performance car and, and somebody's willing to pay a tremendous amount of money and I can throw away a block every once in a while because I, I couldn't Oops. hone it or whatever. Yeah. So yeah, yeah whatever. But I, it's not, it's not something that anybody's going to go mainstream on. Yeah. You do anything with Lotus? What are, what's the limits of Lotus's chassis? Okay. It depends on which car. I don't know which yeah. one he's talking yeah. about. So, and Lotus doesn't just uh, design their own cars. They, they design cars for other people. So I need more detail on that. Okay. Uh, and you know. small companies that you've worked with that you go, yowza, these guys are on to something. All right. Well, I can throw, um, I can toss one company uh, out there right now that, uh, that I think is uh, brilliant. Uh, they're called Turtle Cell. Turtle Cell. What they do is um, um, they, you take your iPhone, not a Samsung or Blackberry, but you take your iPhone and you snap it into their case, and they've got little earbuds at the side, and you pull them out, and you can put them in, and when you're all done, you push the button, and they go back inside, and uh, it sounds, and they've got a little extra battery capacity and stuff like that. It looks cool. Um, you, don't, you don't pay that much more for it than one of the other, um, I've forgotten the name of the other hard shell thing. I don't otter? know what. Otter case? Otter, yeah. yeah. It's, it's a little bit more expensive than that, or it's about the same price or something, but you've got an extra feature. So that's a little company, that's a startup company, and um, that's, a, that's a good example right there. And Michigan, too. It's a cool. Michigan company. Is this a good time for engineers who are interested in getting into businesses, do you think? You mean as entrepreneurs? Yeah. Yeah, any time for an engineer is a good idea. And in fact, in bringing up engineers, Monroe needs more engineers. So um, if you're a costing engineer or you're a product design engineer, or better yet, what I really need is uh, process engineers, um, especially if you happen to be in, um, you know, the, the primaries like aluminum um, uh, processing or, or um, uh, like processing cars. I, I'm. You're higher. So, so, so why aren't there more of them? Why, why isn't there a greater availability? Why do you have to? Why isn't there a greater ability? Well, that would no, be because. No, availability. Um, availability is because um, about 15 or 20 years ago, we told kids that it was stupid to be engineers. After all, who wants to be an engineer if you can be on Dancing with the Stars or um, be an actor. That was my career path. It didn't work out. I know. I, I, I heard about you dancing with the stars. <laughs> but but it, was, it, was, it was after a drinking fest and you fell down. <laughs> Look at him, stars. Anyway, sorry. Yes. But anyway, it's, it's, uh, it's a tragedy. Um, and again, this isn't just unique to the United States. Um, this has happened in, uh, in uh, well, the, our neighbors in, uh, actually, our northern neighbors. In Canada, they have a shortage. In Germany, Mexico, I hear, has a shortage. I was going to get right there. That I'm telling you, Mexico, on the other hand, is boosting anybody who promotes um, bringing engineers into the into the marketplace succeeds. Germany is having problems, and now they're actually scabbing or stealing engineers from other places. Yeah, that's incredible. Uh, yeah, yeah, and by the way, for carbon fiber, who's the number one country for carbon fiber? Japan, Austria. Really? Really, yes. If you want carbon fiber uh, uh, manufacturing and whatnot, that's the place. And as if you want to design in carbon fiber, what's the country? England. You got it. Yeah. And yeah. that's because of all the, the motor racing stuff. Yeah. You got it. That and, F1 uh, circle, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah F1 even F1 beyond F1, yeah. but primarily driven by that, yeah. right? So, um, um, and, and why aren't we in it? Because who cares, right? We don't care. Um, even and then there's the other rules and regulations for the aircraft industry. Uh, you know, we could have done this stuff, I think, if uh, if somebody would have let us. If the FAA would have, uh, you know, been a little not so not so tight, we could have we could have probably done stuff like this on the 787. There was tons of applications where we could have gone to uh, a, a plastic solution. But if you have to use aircraft carbon fiber, which is super expensive, unbelievably expensive. Yeah. You're screwed, and they don't like uh, R uh, RTM. They're all hand layup and worthless. Hey, we're getting down towards the end of the show here. We do have one more phone call, and I, I hate leaving those people out there. So, Ben, let's bring in, we'll make this this, this one the last one. Uh, hello, this is Cleb Zorowski in Delmont, Pennsylvania. My question is for the gentleman there, who funds this tear down, at, 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 who pays for that, 
And since a lot of stuff is patented, knowing how they do it, you can't do it any. You can't use it in your product anyway. So, what? Who funds the uh, these teardowns? Thank you. Well, in this case, that would be me. Um, yeah, I funded it. It came from our. Uh, uh, we basically uh, used up all our profits and um, and um, and through the um, a wonderful grace of our bank. <laughs> Independent Bank. I might as well throw. If I'm throwing names out of it, <laughs> Independent Bank uh, was very good to us, or has been very good to us, and um, and uh, kind of like um, 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 kept feeding us. We've managed to clean it all up. But the the two million bucks uh, that was Monroe and Associates that um, absorbed that cost, and Tech Insights have also done this on spec. We did this because we wanted to make sure that we thought anyway. That, uh, that North America could use this as a boost. Now, the second question was, um, what about the patents and all that other stuff? Yeah, there are patents, but for every patent, there's a way of getting around a patent. We get paid for that every day to, to find out how to do something and, and make it go, go away. Uh, patents are also traded. Um, um, maybe, the, maybe the guy tuned in a little late. I've forgotten his name. But anyways, uh, he may have tuned in a little late, but you'll at the beginning of the program, I said that Toyota has traded their fuel cell to BMW, so BMW gave them the underpinnings for the Z4. So that way, you know, that's what automotive people do all the time. There's no, that's not a secret. A lot um, of trade. Everybody, in fact, even the cell phone guys, they trade patents and copyrights and all kinds of stuff. Yeah, yeah. Well, look, uh, we're at the top of the hour here. This has been fantastic, Sandy. This is really good. Thank you. We, you know, I, I don't know, this, this may be the fourth or fifth time you've been on the show. You've been on quite a bit. You go back to the old shop. Exactly. And uh, so it's, it's great having you back on again. Very valuable. Thank you. Well, thank you. Thanks very much. Good. And Lindsay, thanks for, for joining us. We'll thanks, have you back Dr. again, too. We didn't even get to the front suspension. I know. That's got to be part two. <laughs> Yeah. Actually, I brought all this crap. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I gotta lug it all back. Yeah. I'm gonna build a car when we go. Yeah. That's right. yeah. yeah. But Gary, you and I will be back here next week. Next week, we'll do another show because yes. Autoline After Hours is a great way for anybody to be able to get really good inside insights into what's going on in this business. So I want to thank all you guys. Thanks, John. I want to thank you, all of you for having tuned in. Yeah. Autoline After Hours is brought to you by. Bridgestone Tires, your journey, our passion. And by Henkel, excellence is our passion. Visit our website, Autoline.tv, where you can watch us live. Get your daily news fix with Autoline Daily and in-depth analysis and interviews with Autoline This Week. There is all that and much more at Autoline.tv.